So I have the new Total Chaos factory lower ball joint uniball conversion here. And I just wanted to kind of do a little quick video on the differences between these and the stock lower ball joint. A couple things right off the bat. This is machined out of one solid chunk of steel. Uh, it's very nice. Obviously this is a, a cast piece. The keyed uh, bolt locks in the aftermarket joint are, are machined directly into the piece, whereas the keyed locks on these are actually pressed in and they can come out sometimes or you can lose them. Um, that's a nice bonus. The actual ball joint on the stock one is a ball and socket. And this post goes into a ball um, that is one piece inside this ball joint. Now it necks down here at the base where it connects to the ball. And that's usually the failure point for these if the actual bolt itself breaks off. It'll shear at that. What they did with Total Chaos is they've used a 5 8 12 point bolt through here. So this, this bolt runs all the way through here and it just uses these uh, adapters or misalignment spacers, whatever you want to call them, to match the factory taper. So you would have to shear through this 5 8, inch, five eight inch bolt in order to cause this one to fail, which would be, I mean, that would be pretty impressive if you could do that. So this should be significantly stronger in that aspect of things. Also because it is a one inch uniball joint here, which is much larger than the factory joint. And like I said, this is a ball and cup and this is a uniball, which goes all the way through, which is a ball inside of a race that is pressed into the joint and then snap ring, 25,000 pound snap ring in place. So in order for this to fail, you would either have to wear out the Teflon in your uniball to the point where it actually could escape from the race. I mean, I guess it's technically possible, but that would be that would be quite a uh, accomplishment. You would really have to ignore these things for a long time. Or if you manage to somehow put enough 50,000 pounds of force or whatever it would take to dislodge this snap ring and then push the entire race out of the joint, technically it could fail that way. But again, um, unless you're dropping your truck off of a building, and even then, I don't. I think you'd have to do it about 10 times. So these should be significantly stronger than the stock joint as far as those types of failures. Um, the bolts that hold in are another failure point. They're similar. I mean, there's not much you can do as far as bolt size. These are 10.9 uh, grade bolts. The factory ones, I think, are pretty much the same. They do have a similar type of head on them, a little bit thicker there. You know, you can only do so much as far as strength in the bolts goes. But a couple things to think about that, that leads us into the factory joint goes like this, and you can see it's flat across the bottom. So when this is in the spindle and the spindle drops down, this piece has to come inwards as the spindle drops down. And what happens is a lot of guys, when they lift their suspension, they don't actually cycle it or they don't limit it in any way. And then what happens is every time they drop and this bangs against the inside of that ball joint right here, it weakens the neck down inside of here. It not only weakens that, but it also puts pressure on the plastic on the opposite side of the ball joint, which will over time will wear down and crush that plastic or wear it out. And once that plastic wears out, the metal to metal will just eventually, this whole ball will fall out of the socket. And that's what you see a lot in daily driver type of stuff, especially on lifted vehicles. You can see here that the plane of the ball joint here is in a straight line and the plane of the lower control arm is at an angle. So. I'm not binding because I've measured and installed a proper suspension system that doesn't put me into bind. But for a lot of folks running spacers or springs that are lifted too high and they haven't checked with anything, it's real easy to get yourself into a bind with that lower control arm. And a lot of guys are banging into bind every time they hit full droop and might not even know it. And that, like I said, that puts force on the bolt itself coming through the ball joint. And then also on these four bolts here, uh, they can shear off. So what Total Chaos did, as you can see here, that they have angled the bottom of the cup. 
the joint sits flat, but if you can see inside here, the actual race, ball and race, is angled inside the housing. So when you're sitting flat at the bottom, the ball joint is actually not straight up and down. It's at an angle. So you're already compensating for the, you know, a leveling kit or a lift kit at ride height with this. What happens is as this drops and this has to move forward, you now are not gonna have that bind at full droop that you would have with the factory joint because this is gonna be allowed to move further inwards. So this is not gonna be limiting you as far as your drop goes. Just wanted to show what I was talking about with the angle of the cup. You can see here, this is full droop and the angle is perfectly straight here. The arm is not coming in contact with the inside of the cup. The through bolt is essentially almost in a straight line. So at full droop, there's no binding whatsoever. They've also changed the angle of the tie rod connection here. Factory one goes underneath. Okay, this is the factory tie rod. You can see it's underneath the joint and they've angled it slightly, you can see. And they've also done it so the factory tie rod is gonna sit on top. Flip the tie rod in to the top of the mount so it's at a less drastic angle. It's That's gonna help a little bit with a bump steer on lifted applications and also tie rod bind on lifted applications. So these are, these are pretty much built for a truck that's been lifted in some way, a leveling kit or, you know, mid travel, long travel, anything like that. My truck's only lifted an inch and a half over stock. So I don't have a whole lot of binding issues currently, but I am going to long travel eventually in the future. So I want to get every inch of travel out of that I can. So those are just the, the main differences. And just overall, this is a, it's a really beautifully built piece. I believe this is um, ceramic coated because they couldn't use powder coat just because of the tolerances of the rings and whatnot. And another thing I didn't mention was that the, this top ring here is machined to fit inside the spindle. This is keyed, so it's gonna help hold things in place along with these. Obviously with a uniball, you can rebuild just the joint itself. It can be replaced. Whereas with a, obviously with this joint, you have to replace the entire housing and joint. The uniball is probably more difficult as far as maintenance wise, um, just replacing one. But the cost of the uniball is gonna be a lot less than the cost of a whole new joint. Now, cost wise, this is not a great investment if, if cost is your number one priority. You can get about, let's see, probably about three sets of these stock joints for the cost of one of these. It's not really for economy mode people, but if you push your truck hard and you just, in the back of your mind, you're always worried about beating up your factory. Ball joints and catastrophic failure is always, always a possibility. I think people are debating whether or not it's gonna be actually stronger. The design is still very similar, but you have introduced a drastically larger ball joint assembly altogether. The size difference is quite significant. And of course, size means more distribution of load, which means more strength. Whether or not it's worth it, I don't know. But I, after messing around with this for a while, I have no qualms in my mind that I am not gonna cause this thing to catastrophically fail. Now, I say that, but someone, people have. Um, there's a guy in our group that has a Sequoia with these and he has destroyed them jumping his Sequoia. I mean, everything is breakable. It's always possible. But for the type of wheeling I do, I think it'll be a nice upgrade. I was due for new new ball joints anyway, so we'll see how it goes. All right, got everything put back together. I tried to adjust the toe as best I could visually. It feels a little bit off. I'm gonna have to get it professionally aligned. And the steering's a little heavier because the ball joints are fresh, the uniballs. But the best way to break them in is just keep soaking them in that uh, dry lube. Keep driving and eventually they'll loosen up a little bit. That's my experience with uniball joints, but it's not too bad. That's what we got going here. Nice and clean, no grease to be squirting everywhere. I'm gonna drive it for about a month. I have an alignment set up for next month because I'm going to hopefully be doing some major suspension work here in the next few weeks. Should be pretty cool. All right, any questions you have, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.